My name is Leonel Hamanaka. I want to be a storyteller like my grandpa from my mother's side. Every Sunday, he would sit under an old oak tree in Indiana, gathering the community together by telling a story. My mother was descended from the thousand year old Sasaki samurai clan in Kyoto, the old capital of Japan. Samurai were part of the ruling hierarchy. Her father came to the US in the 1890s to go to college with money from his dad, but gambled his tuition away. Having lost face and being penniless, he got a job on the transcontinental railroad and became reduced in class status. My grandfather had gotten engaged in Japan and his fiance, was living with his parents awaiting his return. After nine years, my grandmother became impatient and came to the US. They married and she got him to quit gambling and save his wages. They ended up as farmers in Indiana and later moved to Utah and opened a successful restaurant in downtown Salt Lake City. My father was from a long line of farmers in Wakayama Prefecture. My father's father left Japan after the eighth grade and risking everything, got a ticket to Fresno, California. He worked his way out of poverty and was also able to start a restaurant and a small hotel. My mother and father met in a concentration camp for Japanese Americans in Jerome, Arkansas during World War II. They were unhappily married to other people. My mother had been abandoned with two children and my father's wife with whom he had a son disagreed with his politics and had fallen for her Methodist minister. My father had graduated Fresno State before the war and majored in speech. His professor had taped my father's voice and my father who had been raised in the Japanese community and never ventured outside was shocked to discover he had a Japanese pigeon accent. My parents united in a common law marriage and resettled in Chicago after the war, where my dad went to Paul Goodman's theater school. It was in the theater school that my father decided to become a professional actor, but he knew he had to finally correct his accent. They moved to New York where my sister Sheila and I were born on the Lower East Side. I felt I was an unwanted love child, squeezed between older siblings and my kid sister, Sheila. Sheila was also illegitimate, but she was the baby of the family and cuddled and spoiled. I only learned I was illegitimate many years later. Eventually my parents did go down to New York City's hall and tie the knot many years after becoming New Yorkers. At first, my mother supported the family. Every day when he was babysitting me and Sheila, my father practiced elocution. For hours, he recited Shakespeare, Lorca, E.E. E. Cummings, T.S. Eliot, Neruda, and many others. We kids played at his feet. And during the games of childhood, we were gradually saturated through the weeks, months, and years by the words of great poets. My father's only material gift to me as a child was a dictionary, and by the time we grew up, we knew many poems by heart. I took part in my own rights of marriage, then divorce and single parenthood. And when my parents became terminally ill, my mother with Alzheimer's and my father with cancer, I cared for them for 12 years. None of my siblings wanted to take care of them. I reached middle age, having worked three jobs to help my son through college, including jazz singing part-time for 30 years and study music. It turned out my son followed in his absent father's footsteps and enlisted serving in the Iraq war. This caused me so much 
anguish, I let it out by writing a play. Much earlier, I had learned the music of literature from my father's constant practice. And even as a tween, I, like my father, began to read a book a day. Books were my friends, literature my cloak, protecting me from a world that felt cold and hard. My father did become a successful worker, working actor in New York City. Most kids don't get exposed to the great writers of the world as a form of daily bread, a gift that left me awestruck. And like him, I was and am constantly learning. Books remain my companions, my sustenance, and this has been my story. Thank you.